saying because they're just so tired of this. So then they want to go to this complete other extreme. Yeah. Even though he's yeah. done everything he can to yeah. diminish it. And the fact of the matter is, if we give them a mission and we don't tie their hands behind their back, they can get it accomplished. Yeah, the solution to everything, understand this, boys and girls, the solution to everything, whether it's the war on drugs, the war on terrorism, is a military, and we just uh, need to bomb the hell out of everybody. And I think and I think we're just all going to be safer. Yeah. They're, they're right. asking Trump yeah. a question here, but I just don't understand why everybody keeps saying the, the cuts in military, like we're gutting our military, like we have the biggest, strongest military <laughs> in the history of the universe. I don't know how it can be much Our stronger. police department, the number of, of police that we have in this country would be the fourth largest in the world, of course, the first largest is our regular military. I mean, we are the most over-militarized country in history. And we got the most number of people in prison as well. But it's not enough. You should be afraid. How do you answer that? It's not fear and terror. It's reality. You just have to look today at Indonesia, bombings all over. You look at California. You look, frankly, at Paris, where there's a, the strictest no-gun policy of any city anywhere in the world, and you see what so happens. So let's just react to everything instead of looking at, at where it started. Mm -hmm. Very, very badly wounded. How are these young people online getting radicalized so easily? And it's because they're pointing the finger at the empire that's going around and policing the world yeah. and not actually doing anything helpful. It's to take their resources, to build their own power, to build their own empire. And you see these young people, they're fed up. Their whole families have been m murdered and livelihood destroyed. Where well, as Gerald Salenti pointed out today, we have dropped uh, during Ob Obama's administration over 23,000 bombs on people. Oh, wow. So, you know, without a declaration of war. So, uh, you know, why would they be angry at us? So, you know, but of course, again, let's understand that it is using radical Islam, which is a combination of religion and politics, always has been, uh, just as they use them effectively against the Russians. Now they can use them against us. So there is a real element there. Okay. And they can really use these guys who want to do this and of course we're giving them every reason to want to attack the United States with our foreign policy and then if they can't find their way here if they can't get here by coming in through Mexico or whatever we will fly them in by the hundreds of thousands right okay a million dollars in loans from Goldman Sachs and Citibank <laughs> during your Senate race oh, here we go campaign says it was right. inadvertent. should be interesting a million dollars is inadvertent <laughs> Well, Maria, thank you Oops. for passing on that hit piece on the front page of the New York Times. It was about all of the money that you said you had in your personal savings, Ted. It was actually oh, it was just a hit piece. Yeah. Had a columnist who wrote a column saying yeah. anybody but Cruz had that actually. Another sure, everybody up there has gotten a little something, something from Goldman Sachs. To an Shoot the messenger. Don't address the. From the movie, it don't address the uh, issue. Apparently from it's what he's doing with Ed Snowden too. When he says Ed Snowden is a is a bad, ignore what our government is doing. Ignore the fact that he didn't report it. Just say, well, it was the New York Times, yeah. or it was Ed Snowden, and Ed Snowden's a traitor. Right, or ignore the fact that Hillary Clinton and her foundation are getting all sorts of donations from foreign governments. Yeah. And don't ask her about that. And, you know, it was an inadvertent misfiling with the Clinton Foundation. Well, running for Senate, just about every lobbyist, just mm -hmm. about all of the establishment opposed me in the Senate race in Texas. And my opponent in that race was worth over $200 million. He put a $25 million check up from his own pocket <laughs> to fund that campaign. So he was an underdog. He only had a million dollars that he borrowed so he from just, his wife. Yeah. We, own, we took a loan <laughs> against our assets to invest it in that campaign to defend ourselves against those attacks. And the entire New York Times attack is that I disclosed that loan on one filing with the United States Senate that was a public filing. But it was not on a second filing with the FEC. Both of those filings. Now, really, the point, Ted, is that your cozy relationship that you've got with Goldman Sachs and Wall Street, that's really the point. Just like the point of the natural born citizen really is do you believe in the Constitution when it doesn't suit your purposes? It's really hard to make that argument that you're not in bed with Goldman Sachs when that's, you're sleeping with your wife. So. Including things like gun rides, the national debt. And the sometimes talking about gun rights next, okay? Hmm. See how many people support the no fly, no buy. All right, they're going to go to a commercial. Are we ready to go to? Let's go to a commercial, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back to the InfoWars live coverage with commentary and analysis of the sixth GOP debate. And of course, they're now asking the big question that we've been talking about, and that is the constitutional basis of a natural born citizen. So here's what Ted Cruz has to say about that. <laughs> He says, I'm glad we're focusing on the important topics of the evening. You know what? It is. Being a qualifying under the Constitution is an important question. It's one that should be asked. And I'm surprised that nobody but Donald Trump seems to care about that right. anymore. And isn't that exactly how Obama laughed it off as well? Yeah, Obama laughed it off. Ha-ha, <laughs> birthers. Ha-ha. The Constitution hasn't changed. No, it sure hasn't changed. But the poll numbers have. Oh. Wow. And I recognize... I recognize. Well, you know what, Ted? There were a lot of us that were talking about the fact that you weren't qualified, neither were Rubio from the very beginning. Yeah, how is he going to get yeah. past that lawsuit? A child of a U.S. citizen born abroad is a natural born citizen. If a soldier has a child abroad, that child is a natural born citizen. That's why John McCain, even though he was born in Panama, was eligible to run for president. If born in a military base. As a child abroad, really that US child territory is a anyway. born citizen. That's why George Romney, Mitt's dad, was eligible to run for president even though he was born in Mexico. No, he the wasn't. The day, the Read the Constitution, Ted. Forward, but I would note that the birther theories that Donald Trump is relying on, some of the more extreme ones insist that you must not only be born on U.S. soil, but have two parents born on U.S. soil under that theory, not only would I be disqualified, Marco Rubio would be disqualified, yeah. Bobby Jindal would be disqualified, and interestingly enough, Nikki Haley, Donald J. Trump would be disqualified. I don't think so. I, I oh, thought both of his this. parents were born here. I'm not sure about I don't know. that. Because Donald's <laughs> mother was born in Scotland, she was naturalized. Now, Donald... But I was issue, born here. On the issue of if she was naturalized before he was born, that would not yeah. be a disqualification. Because Rubio's parents were not. Use your mother's mm -hmm. birth against They were not naturalized when he was born. You're an American, as is everybody else on this stage, and I would suggest we focus... Let's just say that anybody that's... You know, we used to say anybody who's born in America, you can grow up to become president. Well, let's just say that anybody in the world can grow up to be president of the United States. Let's just make it that, that universal. Yeah, you don't you have to have any here. ties to our yeah. nation. You can come to America, you can get a free education. You don't have to be an American citizen. You can come here, you can get a free college education forever if Bernie Sanders gets his way. And you can be president of the United States. You don't have to be born in America. Your parents don't have to be born American citizens. And we really don't care anything about what the Constitution says. I like NBC, but I like the poll. And frankly, it just came out. And in Iowa now, as you know, Ted, in the last three polls, I'm beating you. So, you know, you shouldn't misrepresent how well you're doing with the polls. You don't have to say that. In fact, I was all for you until you started doing that because that's a misrepresentation. Number one. Number two. This isn't me saying it. I don't care. I think I'm going to win fair and square. I don't have to win this way. Thank you. It is a fair question, though. It isn't an underhanded question. You shouldn't hide yeah. from it. It ought to qualifying for the office of president. You know what? There's a certain age requirement as well. We're we just going to weigh that. Are we going to say a 12-year-old can be president? There are reasons that these things are there. If you don't like them, fine. Change the Constitution. The Constitution says what the Constitution says. And we need to understand, one more thing. We need to understand that when they pass the 14th Amendment, a lot of people say, well, it's made a moot point by the 14th Amendment. When they pass the 14th Amendment, the guy who wrote it, said that uh, it didn't apply, it, that it did not convey citizenship to foreigners who were born in America. How could you be a foreigner born in America under this theory? If you're, if you're immediately an American citizen because you're born in America, then you couldn't be a foreigner born in America. It's because you had to have American parents who were citizens and be born in America. That's what natural born citizen meant in the 1770s. That's what it meant in the late 1800s. That's what it meant until Barack Obama wanted to run for office. So we just waive all the requirements so we can have a foreign president. You can even serve in office. So you should go out, get a declaratory judgment, let the courts decide, and you shouldn't have mentioned the polls because I would have been much different. Why now? Why are you raising this issue now? Because now he's doing a little bit better. No, I didn't care before. It's true. No, it's true. Hey, look, he never had 
a chance. Now he's doing better. He's got probably a four or five percent chance. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump likes to maintain a big lead. The, the fact is, there's a big... Well, he was in the single digits until recently. Right. Been climbing up. And you can't do that to the party. You really can't. You can't do that to the party. You have to have certainty. Even if it was a 1% chance, and it's far greater than 1%, because he wasn't born. I mean, you have great constitutional lawyers that say you can't run. If there was a... And, the, and you know... I'm not bringing a suit, I promise. But the Democrats... The bottom line is it betrays his principle of strict constitutional interpretation. That's what Lawrence Tribe pointed out. Whether you agree with uh, the fact that uh, we should have a strict constitutionalist or whether you think it's a living document, that's uh, a matter of discussion. I think it, we should go with a strict interpretation, but he violates his own principles. He violates the Constitution. Right, and that's what he said. He's spent his whole life defending the Constitution yeah. for the U.S. Supreme Court. Until it's in his own interest to violate it. And that's right. something that is very concerning about presidents. We've had too many presidents who do whatever <laughs> they want. Uh, when it gets in their way, just like and the one we look, got now. What Donald Trump was saying about the Democrats filing lawsuit, it looks like Grayson files to file a lawsuit on crew citizenship. Right. Yes, yes. So that just came out, yes. I guess, last week. There was already, already there's been a lawsuit filed, and Alan Grayson is going to file a lawsuit if he hasn't filed it already. And so. there's a reason right. why Hillary's supporters are echoing Donald's attacks on me. He is not Hillary the only one. Wants he is not Donald the only Trump one. In the there general are many election. lawyers. And I'll tell you what, Donald, you, you very kindly just a moment ago offered me the VP slot. It's not just the left who's saying this, okay? The, the New American, I've been saying it, a lot of people understand what a natural born citizen is. We've been concerned about this since Obama ran. And now what do we got? We've got uh, three Republican candidates and we've got somebody being touted as a vice presidential potential, Nikki Haley. And they all ignore the qualifications for citizenship. Doesn't work out. Actually, I'd love I have to a get feeling. I have wall. a feeling it's going to work out. Actually, right. I, that, you, I was a Neil. Neil, Neil, Neil I can tell you. Neil, I they just Neil, offered the vice presidency this. to each other. Neil, great, that's ridiculous. That's great. Wow. Well, you know, if you're not qualified to be president, you're not qualified to be vice president either. <laughs> it's just whatever is expedient. Yes, Marco Rubio. Tell us how you are allowed to be the president. I think we have to get back to what this election has to be about. Okay, listen, we this is the greatest country in the history. Yeah, let's not talk about the Constitution, guys. Come on, let's get to something that is serious. Okay. <laughs> got a bomb Russia, finance yeah. ISIS. We got to hire more buzzwords. illegals. Yeah, That's we right. got to get back to the business of running America. Yeah, let's open the borders. Let's ignore the laws at the uh, on immigration, and let's forget about the Constitution. Come on, we're wasting time here. That's why I'm running for office. Because when I become president of the United States, on my first day in office, we are going to repeal every single one of his unconstitutional executive orders. Are you going to repeal the unconstitutional executive orders of George W. Bush? We are getting right. Obamacare, Let's and we are rebuilding <laughs> our military. And when Let's I take it way back. President yeah. that gives the State of the Union and says America is the greatest country in the world. When I'm president, we're going to have a president that acts like it. Thank you, Senator. Yeah. Because we've already repealed the Constitution. So the next guy who comes in, he's going to be just a Republican dictator who can repeal whatever the Democrat dictator did. Oh, there she is. The big hero of the GOP establishment because Nikki Haley was chosen by Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and the rest of the GOP establishment to attack Donald Trump, make him look angry and uh, nativist. She confirmed she was referring to you, among others. Was she out of line? And how would a President Trump unite the party? Okay. First of all, Nikki this afternoon said I'm a friend of hers, actually a close friend. And I, wherever you are sitting, Nikki, I am a friend. We're friends. That's good. <laughs> she did say, she did say there was anger. And I could say, oh, I'm not angry. I'm very angry because our country is being run horribly. And I will gladly accept the mantle of anger. Our military is a disaster. Our health care is a horror show. Obamacare, we're going to repeal it and replace it. We have no borders. Our vets are being treated horribly. Illegal immigration is beyond belief. Our country is being run by... In Gotta admit, I'm pretty angry myself with this whole thing. And I won't be angry when we fix it. Obama just wants us to placate us all, and he winks at us and tells us everything's fine, creating lots of jobs One of the for illegals. 
and said, well... I thought Ann Coulter had a lot of great tweets in response to what Nikki Haley had said. She said uh, he's angry. Uh, we need to uh, properly vetted legal immigrants regardless of their race.